Hi there, my name is Gregory Adam Scott. This is my game, Armored Commander, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. Uh, this is a preview of Alpha 5 Release Candidate 1, because it's not enough to just have multiple Alpha versions, you also need multiple release candidates for each one. Uh, what this really means is that I'm almost to the point where I want to make this available for public download. Um, I uh, uploaded this uh, release candidate one onto the Temple of the Roguelike forums. Uh, I got some feedback almost immediately on some pretty serious crashes, which luckily were quite easy to fix. And um, now that some of those are fixed, I'm going to try to do another playthrough and show you some of the additional features, some of the newer features that are in Alpha 5. Now, I'm going to start a new campaign, but I've changed the code so that I start with a more advanced tank um, rather than the stock basic M4, just to give you an idea of what the, the additional features of the later models of Sherman um, are likely to look at, to, to uh, what, what they look like. So let's start a new campaign. Yes, I'm sure. Intro text. Let's name it Stalwart Old Caribou. And we're ready to go, but the first thing I'm going to do in the combat journal is I'm going to view my tank and show you what it is. So I have changed the code so that I start with an M4A 376W or the Sherman easy eight now if i go into the code um, where the vehicle definitions are kept i can take a look at the exact um, the armor levels and the easy eight has a front armor a uh, hull front armor of 11 and a turret front armor of eight so that is much higher than the uh, panzer IV. it's not as high as the as the panther um, it's comparable to a tiger tank so both the easy eight and the tiger have the same hull front armor the Tiger, on the other hand, has a turret front armor of 14, um, which is much higher than the than the Easy 8s um, turret front armor, which is only eight. But still, much beefier um, protection for uh, for the for this uh, chassis for this for this Sherman body. Now, the gun as well is different. The gun is a 76 millimeter. Uh, incidentally, the W in the name refers to wet stowage, and this is a feature that I have not added to Armored, Armored Commander yet. But when I do add it, um, the later Shermans that have wet stowage, so instead of keeping the ammo um, in racks, just basically dry racks, which are prone to explode and burn up, instead they're kept in these cases of, um, of liquid, think like water and, uh, and another material to try to uh, extinguish the flame. Um, if, they, if it does get ahead, if they do get damaged. The, the effect of this is that if you have a tank with wet stowage, it's much less likely to brew up or to, to catch on fire. And your crew has a much, if, if they're, for one reason or another, if they're unable to bail out, they have a much greater chance of actually surviving to fight another day. So the 76 millimeter gun only has three types of ammo. We don't have the smoke ammo. We have the well-known um, high explosive and armor penetrating. We also have these shells called high velocity armor penetrating. And I think these shells had a, a slightly different name in Commonwealth tanks, but what they basically are is a super powered, um, very uh, s strong version of the AP round. The downside is that most of the HVAP rounds were intended for tank destroyers. Um, but I think the way that um, Patton's best explains it is that um, a lot of the tank crews managed to scrounge um, at least a few um, for themselves. And the idea is that you save these and you use them when you're facing something like a tiger or a panther and you want to, to you want to chance it um on a, on a on a kill shot to try to try to take it out um the hv uh, hvap and for the 76 millimeter uh, sorry for the 75 millimeter gun the hcbi smoke rounds both are limited supply of ammo so i'll show you what, what that looks like in a moment so let's begin the combat day weather is clear resistant expected resistance is light we'll start this number up here shows me that this is a limited type of ammo and for today there's only one shell um, that's available and it varies between one and three i think it's basically an equal chance of getting one two or three shells for the day so i definitely want to load that um, hvap shell and i want to toss it right into the ready rack and keep it ready for later now if i try to load more hvap shells i can't i only have one available for me for uh for today i can hang on to the shell though and if i don't use it today it will still be in my stores tomorrow and I'll get another one to three. So if you want to save your, um, you know, super powered armor penetrating ammo for later on, uh, you can just keep it in your general stores. So I got my HVAP. Let's load up with other types of ammo. And you'll note that I'm not sure if it's because of the different gun or a different layout. The um, M4A3s, actually, I think it's because the M4A3s 
are a different type of hull that you have uh, much fewer um, total shells that you can hold. Uh, so it's 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 supposed to be quite reflective of of the uh, of the historical ability of the tanks as well. So let's load it up. Take 30 AP. Sounds like a nice round number. That's ready. Commander hatches are open. Um, start off with HE and we're ready to go. Now the 76 millimeter gun um, uses um, different charts for the to hit and the to kill process. So even just with the regular stock armor penetrating shell, we're going to get um, more chance to take out armored targets than we would with the 75 millimeter gun. It's just a better gun overall. Um, I'm not sure if the HG actually has any different effect. It might have a, a, a better to hit, but I think that the uh, the end result is pretty much the same. I think if you look at the original to kill charts for the, the effect of the exploding shells, I think 75 and 76 millimeter guns um, are pretty much the same. So that's good. And let's get to playing and we'll see, see what we find. Here's my start area. Light resistance. Now that I've got the EZ-8, I feel invincible, and I'm just going to move around with abandon, feeling that I can take on anything that the German defend, uh, defending, defending forces throw at me. No resistance. Perfect. Check. Medium. I'm not even going to bring in, ar in artillery. I'm just going to go right in. Battle encounter is triggered. That's bad. Now, a couple other things I should mention. Um, the new models of Sherman that I've added are still quite basic. There's a lot of mechanics in the original Patton's Best that I think will be reflected in this game. For example, if uh, there's this whole mechanic called the lead tank, so you might see sometimes where there is uh, enemy attack and if it targets the lead tank. Um, traditionally, up until now, your tank has never been the lead tank. It's been assumed to be somewhere back in the row. In future versions, perhaps from Alpha 6 onward, your tank might randomly be assigned to the lead position. And all of a sudden, um, you're getting in a lot more firing because there's a lot more chances for enemy tanks, um, self-propelled guns, and AT guns to actually target you as opposed to any of your friendly forces. The heavier armored tanks, including the uh, the Jumbo and I believe also the EZ-8, were more often put in the lead position just because they had a much better capacity to absorb incoming hits. And that's going to be reflected in Armored Commander as well. So bonus... You get assigned a very well-armored tank with a lot of firepower. The bad side is, is that more often you're going to be called upon to lead the armored column, and you're going to take a lot more hits, which hopefully your, uh, your extra armor will allow you to survive. So um, let's get back to the battle. What was spotted? A truck, a tank, and an AT gun. Again, the tank and the, e and the AT gun are my immediate worries. The tank, especially since it's at close range. Luckily, I w um, they didn't ambush me, and I have the first attack. So the commander spotted the truck. Commander sp spotted this. What is it? Uh, it's a Panzer V. So it's a Panther. It's a very powerful gun. I'm going to need all of the ammo, all, all of the firepower, and all of the armor that I just got with this easy with this easy eight to try to take it out. And okay, a Pack 38. That's not too bad. Um, it's I believe the weakest of the of the anti tank guns that's included in the game. So my plan right now, it's front facing and the front armor on a Panther is really, really hard to beat. Um, and I've got HE loaded. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is try to pivot, bring both the tank and the AT gun into my front facing, um, throw in an AP shell and just start firing and hopefully I can penetrate and knock this, knock this Panther out. And in the meantime, what I might do is get the commander to throw a smoke grenade and we'll get the loader and the driver and the assistant driver to button up. And you might notice one of the differences with the later Shermans is that the loader actually has a hatch. In the stock M4 that you normally begin the campaign with, he doesn't have a hatch. He's just got to look out his um, periscope. In this case, he does have a hatch, which allows him to see, um, if it's open, allows him to see all of the, all of the sectors to spot. Um, but he's done his job. I don't want him to get hurt. So let's button him up. And we'll get the driver to pivot. System driver isn't going to do anything. Loader's going to change the gun load to AP. Gunner's not going to do anything. He's going to keep his turret pointed straight ahead. Load it with AP, pivot, and we're good. Got the smoke dropped. Uh, Panther moves further away. Pack 38 fires at the lead tank to no effect. Smoked, smoked, and Pack 38 is destroyed. Okay, so I respotted the um, Panther, which I needed to do. 
And because he changed position, he becomes unspotted. I've identified him, but unless he's spotted, I can't actually do an attack on him. Now at this point, there is one smoke factor in my hex and one in the panther's hex, which means it's going to be very difficult to hit. But I'm going to start firing right away because I know that the more times, even if I don't hit him, I can uh, get uh, first the acquired target one and then acquired target two. So commander, you are going to direct main gun fire. Gunner is going to fire the main gun. Loader is going to load. Uh, driver is going to stop. System driver isn't going to do anything. And everything is ready. It would be nice if I were in a haul down position, but I don't want to spend the time to move and actually get hauled down. I just want to fire off a shell. Um, the panther, unfortunately, is hauled down. Now, I'm thinking about changing this because it doesn't really make sense for him to be both moving and hauled down. I can imagine a tank moving behind a small hill, but for the most part, if you want haul down, you have to you have to stay put and you have to take advantage of a certain position um, that protects your haul. So I think in the future what I'll do is that um, if a tank is in motion, it can't be hauled down. As soon as it stops, it has a chance to gain a haul down position. So for now, um, this tank is going to be very hard to hit, but let's give it a shot. Anyway, let's fire the main gun, direct fire. So when you six or less, yes, I was lucky, I hit. So let's take a look, look at the modifiers. Base to hit is eight because it's a vehicle at medium range. It's moving, plus two. Luckily, the, panth the panther is so large that I get a minus one. Uh, smoke factors, both in the target hex and mine hex, total of two. And the commander is directing fire, so that's a minus one. Net DRM of plus two, I need a six or, hit, hit, a six or less to hit. I hit, and I maintained rate of fire, so let's throw another one his way. Hit again. Let's keep doing it. One more AP shell in the ready rack. Eight or less, hit. Didn't maintain rate of fire. That's the end. So I believe I got three hits on that. Let's see what happens. Chances are most of them are going to be hull hits. Because he's hull down, they're going to have no effect. They're going to plow into the hill or whatever that he's got in front of him. So let's see what happens. Hull down unharmed. Hit in the turret. No chance to hit, kill the target. Remember I said at the beginning a um, couple minutes ago, the turret armor on a on a panther is extremely heavy, uh, extremely thick. Now, even though, and this is a mistake, I, I need to change this a little later. It's technically a 76L, meaning that it has a greater um, greater chance to hit at long range. But in any case, so I, I hit it, I hit in the turret. The front armor of the Panther turret is so heavy that I don't have a chance to kill it with the regular AP fired from a 76. Um, this is a bit of a problem because at this point, unless I get a critical hit, I'm not going to hurt him because his hull is protected from hull down and his turret is too heavily armored. And hull down again, so see what happens. Panther fires at me. Hits me in the hull. Luckily it's on my front, so hopefully I'll be able to survive it. No, I could not survive it. Uh, the base to kill number is 23. That's how strong the the the, uh, the Panther's gun is. It's at medium range, so that gives me a, a slight advantage. It's on my side armor, so here's the problem with these hexes. It's random. For these hexes that, that straddle two uh, sectors, it's random where the shot comes from. I was very unlucky, unlucky that he was just far enough on this uh, on this side of the line to have it hit on my side armor. And even on an easy eight, the side armor is not going to be that great. So my tank's knocked out. Let's see what happens. Luckily, it doesn't explode. Um, but from the original hit, so from the, uh, the 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 shot from the Panther that penetrated the Sherman and knocked it out, um, that might result in injuries to crew. And there's a whole system to, for trying to figure out, okay, which sector did the shot come from? And if it came from the front, then it's more likely that the driver and assistant driver will be injured, whereas um, the guys in the turret are much, much less likely to be injured. Same for if the shot actually hit the turret or the hull. So it, 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 takes, that, it takes into account a little bit sort of the background or the circ circumstances of the hit to calculate injuries. So um, now the next screen is going to show injuries. It might go by a little, a little quickly. Um, I'm still still working on its display, but let's see what happens to my crew. So, list of the crew, initial injury, um, then they get a chance to bail out. After they bail out, they might get injured again, and then we see if the, if the tank actually brews up or not. Because remember, I haven't implemented this wet, wet ammo, so it's something like an 80% chance that it actually catches on fire. And uh, anybody who's not able to bail out is burned to death uh, inside the tank, unfortunately. So let's see incapacitated that's not good everybody bails out some light wounds and it burned up but luckily everybody was actually able to, to bail out um, incapa incapacitated means that were they to be wounded while still inside the tank 
and you continue to play on, they can't actually do any actions. Um, so in this case, I wouldn't have been able to re reload the main gun because my loader was incapacitated. And at the end of the battle, um, it takes about 30 minutes and you replace them with a new crew member. Now, for now, and I'm not sure how I'm going to develop this in the future, but for now, the commander is the key crew member because if the commander is seriously wounded or killed, your uh, campaign comes to an end. Your campaign is over because in my mind, you're kind of playing the role of commander. And if, if the commander is the one who's, who's taken out, either wounded seriously enough to be sent home or just killed outright, then your campaign is over. You can't advance through the, the combat uh, journal anymore and that's it. So luckily everybody bailed out, but my combat day is over. And for all of that, I gained a total of four victory points. Um, and that's all from friendly forces because I wasn't able to crack uh, that panther, unfortunately. So, um, uh, as I said, the loader was in, uh, incapacitated, so he gets replaced by a new crew member. And HQ has assigned me a new tank. Uh, it's an M4A375, so I've lost my 76 millimeter gun, now I have a 75. It's a turret D, so I think that is a later one that has, uh, it does have a loader hatch. So now I have to name my new tank. And let's name it Caribou 2, son of Caribou. And now I can view my tank. So you see, here's my replacement tank, Caribou 2, 75 millimeter gun with all the should by now familiar um, ammo types and the loader has been replaced uh, by a new name. It's probably a good idea not to get too attached to most of your crew. Uh, later on, um, and this is probably one of the next major things that I'm gonna develop, um, you might have noticed that I've taken out the skill numbers. So in Patton's Best, each of your crew has a skill level between one and 10. And this is applied as a positive mo modifier to roles that you do. I got rid of that because what I want to do instead is crew gain experience for surviving a day of combat um, related to the number of victory points, but also uh, a random bonus number as well. As you gain experience points, you will go up levels. With every level, you can give them specific skills, which will give them more abilities or positive modifiers on, uh, on certain roles and certain actions that they do. Um, the randomness comes in in that um, a lot of these skills, so for example, the gunner might have a skill that increases his chance to hit, but it only activates 5% or 10% of the time. Um, if you later on, when you are awarded an, an, another level, if you upgrade this skill, it will go from activating 10% of the time to 20% of the time, for example, and you won't know ahead of time when it's going to happen. So you might do a shot and in the to hit window, it pops up gunner you know, crack shot skill or whatever, and it'll give you the extra bonus. And hopefully it'll, it'll activate um, just when you need it. And there's going to be an array of different skills um, for the different uh, positions. So in that case, after you play through several days um, and, you, and you lose a crew member, either because they're in, injured badly enough that they have to um, go away to hospital for a while, or they're killed or simply set, uh, sent home, uh, it's really going to be a loss because you're going to lose these very beneficial skills that you would have built up over many days of, uh, of combat. So let's do another day and see what happens. Oh, so the first, well, I can do this later. I don't uh, necessarily have to load ammo into my tank now. In fact, I might as well wait because it's not until the morning briefing when I get allocated my, uh, my daily ration of the smokers of the uh, HCBI. So as I go through the days, it's uh, invisibly doing a roll in the background to see whether or not I get into action. And on August 1st, I'm called up for action again. Um, another feature which I want to add later on is an ability to go back and to look at um, your combat journal. So sort of like a calendar of past events. So for each day that you actually saw combat, it'll give you a summary as to what happened. In this case, tank knocked out after trying to take on a panther and losing. Uh, in other days, it just might say you finished the day, you, caught, you captured this many zones, you got this many victory points, you fired this many shells, um, that sort of stuff. I mean, because, because it's not a board game, and a lot of these calculations are going on in the background, you can really pile on the uh, statistics um, if you like, which would be a nice thing to do for the future. So let's begin the combat day on August 1st, set up our tank. Um, as I said again, so HCBI is a limited kind of ammo, not quite as limited as the high velocity armor penetrating, but we still only have four, which we're gonna load, we're gonna take all of them, and we'll throw, let's say two into the ready rack. Um, WP is unlimited, so we can take as many as we like of those. Let's take, say, 10, and then AP, and fill it up like that. Now, this is a M4A3 Sherman. It said before what kind of turret it has, but a lot of the later Shermans 
Um, the ready rack is a bit smaller. So I think the stock M4 has a ready rack size of, I think, eight. This one only has four. So with the different models of Sherman, you need to adjust your strategy um, in terms of what you load. For, so I've chosen to take two AP shells because I think they're probably going to be quite useful later on. Um, and then I have a total of 100 um, general stores shells that I can stock up. So, and this is something I should change too because it's a new tank. The hatch status is stored with the crew member, not with the tank. So the hatch status for these guys is still shut. So I'll op open them up later on, not for Alpha 5, because I think I've, 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 I've just about done enough except for squashing some of the remaining bugs. But for later alphas, um, that'll be fixed as well. And you'll have, you'll, you'll start totally anew when you start a new tank. So that's done. Start area. Let's see, let's try to get over to that road. Light resistance, no worries. Light resistance, move again, no resistance. Things are going so well. And it's an interesting sort of patchwork of roads. Uh, that's my exit area, but let's ride the roads up. No resistance again, it's all light, so it's relatively unlikely that I actually run into any resistance. So I mean, when it says lights, that's sort of like the scout, the scouting reports from the scout cars and the armored cars and the other kind of recce units that are going ahead of you. And it's not until you actually go into the area until you find out what is actually on the ground. Light resistance, um, village nodes, village uh, map areas are worth more victory points. So I'm definitely going to try to snag that. And we have a battle, AT gun, tank. And that's it, because it was just light resistance, just two units, but an AT gun in a tank is more than enough. And I get ambushed. Let's see what happens. Fires at a friendly tank. No effect. That's good. Fires a friendly tank. One friendly tank destroyed. So I've already lost some victory points even before I start. So I'm, I'm five. I'm down five even before I fi fired a single shot. That's not great. Tank is hidden. That's good. Takes him out of the equation. Unidentified AT gun. It uh, doesn't really matter. I'm going to take him out anyway. Stationary in a building, so I think I'm going to lob over um, area fire. Now, at the moment, I realize there's a problem with area fire that I won't be able to fix for this alpha, but um, in standard advanced squad leader rules, in area fire, the to hit roll is in effect affected by terrain. The to kill roll is eventually affected by terrain, and that's the opposite as if you um, as when you use direct fire, I believe. I'm, I'm by no means an advanced squad leader um, expert or, or even somebody who knows even, you know, very much about it at all. But from my understanding, that's how it works. At the moment, area fire is quite powerful because you ignore terrain. And in the two kill role, it also igno ignores terrain as well. So for, you know, while you can use area fire to your advantage, because once I fix it, um, these guys in the buildings, they'll be easier to hit, but they'll be harder to kill. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, you drop a shell nearby. You might be able to get it in the general area of the building. Bu I mean, you can see the building. That's not going to stop you from from hitting it. But if they're inside the building and protected, um, it'll give them protection from the actual explosion and protect them from getting taken out, um, either killed outright or just injured sufficiently that the squad that the squad or the gun um, is, is is rendered ineffective. So in any case, the the point of this is, uh, I'm going to fire direct main gun fire, fire main gun. Everybody else, button up, because we're going to fight. Stop. Yeah, sounds good. Now, I'm still thinking how to handle this, but at the moment, if you notice, I'm, I'm, I want to reload from the ready rack, but I don't have any shells, any HE shells in my ready rack. And I'm trying to figure out how much, how much hand-holding I want to do for the player. If you get into a battle and you don't have any HE shells in the ready rack, should it automatically switch to general stores? Probably, and it wouldn't be that hard to do. But at least at this point, um, before you finish your your orders, you should definitely take a look at everything, make sure it makes sense. So yeah, actually in this case, since I don't need to spot anything, let's get the driver to, uh, the assistant driver to pass ammo because at least that'll give me a slight bonus to maintain rate of fire. So orders are done. Switch to area fire for what is now uh, a bit of a cheat or a bug or a glitch or whatever you want to call it fire away eight or less nice got a three almost a critical hit maintain rate of fire let's fire again hit again so i've got the target acquired working in my advantage unfortunately i didn't maintain uh, rate of fire so that's it so i got two hits see what happens to them 
um, unharmed. Now, one thing that is a f that is applied to the two kill rule, which um, which should be and ought to be, um, is emplaced gun target. The idea being that even in the open, when an AT gun is already set up and ready to fire, that the crew is going to have a lot of protection. Um, it doesn't take into account um, sort of gun shields or anything like that. But right now, it will use the highest modifier possible. And um, because I haven't implemented fortifications, which are kind of basically like stone buildings in ASL, um, at this point it gets in place guard, uh, gun target as a bonus. So I had to roll less than six. I rolled a 10. That's not good enough. Oh, 10 again. That's still not good enough. So AT gun is fine. Fires at me. Nine or less. Luckily it missed. The Sherman, even though it's a medium tank, counts as a large vehicle tar uh, target. I think that's because its um, profile is so high, and originally this was because they um, wanted to use these uh, kind of gasoline rotary uh, rotary engines that I think were initially developed for aircraft. Um, and um, this is all because the Sherman was sort of based. I won't talk too much about this, but the Sherman was sort of based on the, uh, the on the Grant, the uh, the General Grant tank. And it initially had a very high profile. That's something they maintained in the Sherman. So even though it's a medium tank, it's not that big of a tank. I think it counts as a large vehicle target because it's so high up off the ground and it's easier to hit. Luckily, that didn't help the AT gun. Still a bit of a problem. Uh, this, should, this probably should be 75 millimeter AP. I'll fix it later. It's OK. It's good enough for now. Hidden tank doesn't do anything. AT gun is destroyed. That'll teach you to shoot at me. Enemy artillery fire. That's not good. Infantry squads are destroyed. Nobody in my tank is hurt. All right. So at this point, all that's left is a hidden tank. Now, as I said before, it's going to stay hidden, which means I can't attack it. It can't attack me um, until one of us moves. So I think what I would like to do is get the commander to direct movement and order the driver to go forward. Um, no, let's reverse to haul down, because if I go forward, it might end up in my side. Um, in, a, in a side uh, shot here, whereas right now it's kind of 50-50 whether it's going to be from the side or from the front. So reverse to haul down. It's a little bit more difficult than forward to haul down. Um, you don't have to pass ammo anymore. You can just go on none. And let's change the gun load, and we'll change it to AP. And in the future, I'm going to reload AP from the ready rack. And the gunner isn't going to do anything. AP wasn't enough to move me. Hidden tank was destroyed by friendly action. And now we've got a truck. Trucks are no worries because they're just trucks. There's not much they can do to a tank like me. Let's fire the main gun. Stop. None. AP is loaded. And let's use the ready rack. Why not? Why not? I'm hoping that the this combat round will be over once I take out this truck. So direct fire. Nothing. So originally I needed a six because um, he is medium range. Commander buttoned up. Now this is a weird one because he is directing fire and his hatch is open, so I'm not really sure why that applied. I'll have to take a look at this later on. In fact, I'll make a note of this now because that's a pretty serious problem. Part of the problem is that I still have some of the modifiers from uh, Patton's Best um, that are still implemented. A lot of the roles are still um, sort of percentile roles. Uh, whereas the core ones, the ones that you use, use more often, are now changed to more reflect um, ASL 2D6 based with um, dice roll modifiers. And this might be just something that's left over uh, from before. In any case, I'll look at it. Uh, target was moving, so I needed a three or less. I missed. Maintain rate of fire, which is good. So let's fire off another one. Four or less. Nice. And I don't have any AP left in my ready racks because it's quite a small ready rack. So let's switch to general. Fire off another one. Hit again. Almost a critical hit. Oh, this truck is not having a good day. Finally missed. And you'll notice um, last time, or uh, either last video or the one before that, um, I had a crash because it didn't know what to do with uh, with the truck, which is which is uh, very lightly arm armored. But now I, uh, it knows what to do, and I basically needed less than nine, um, which is pretty surprising because it's just a truck. And uh, in, in any case, it was destroyed. Oh, now we've got a light weapons squad to deal with. Okay, that's all right. We're, we're loaded. We're ready to go. We can deal with it. So uh, let's use the MGs on this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot the tank, fire the coax, and the bow MG. Am I pronouncing that right? Bow? Bow? I think it's bow. Uh, loader is going to change the gun load to HE. 
you direct coax MG fire because the coax is a higher firepower. And let's leave his hatch open because the commander is brave. Done. HE. Pivot. MG fire. Coax. No dice. Oh, the target's in the building. That's a problem. I didn't even look. Very hard to kill units in the building with M with MG fire. Uh, no no chance with the with the bow MG. So bow MG, with the hull MG in any case. Uh, that was my MG tax. See, I should fix this too because it should automatically progress um, to the next phase. I don't have any more MG attacks to do. But at least it doesn't let you do anything, and at least it doesn't crash, which is always nice. So let's finish. Moves further away. I don't blame it. Hit with smoke. Um, small arms fire peppers my tank. And the only one who's opened up is the commander. He's all right. Light weapons infantry. So now they are in woods, which is only, I think, a plus one um, dice, dice roll modifier for the attack. So I'm not going to use that anymore. I'm going to use HE, fire main gun, load stop, uh, pass ammo. He's good for something. He can, he's good for passing ammo. So, and let's do area fire mode because if I remember correctly, area fire has a very nice um, to hit in uh, in medium range. I think seven. Eh, that's not too bad. So I hit. Yes, he's destroyed, and that's it. The encounter comes to an end. Six victory points. Let's keep going because I would like to get through an entire day of combat without dying at some point in one of these videos. So um, now because. I used quite a bit of ammo. Let's view the tank and refill the ready rack now and open up these hatches. Refill the ready rack now so I don't have to remember it uh, for later on because I'm not good at remembering things. Two AP shells. Yep, that's good. Let's check over here. Medium resistance. So let's try to call in some artillery. Successful. Battle. Self-propelled gun. Truck. Another truck. Artillery fire. Smoked. Destroyed. And no effect on the SPG. That's the one I wanted you to take out, guys. That's it's not very helpful. All right, now it's ambushing me. Luckily, it just... Oh, it shifted its position around. Well, that's interesting. The truck moved closer, and then it didn't actually move. We'll have to check that out. Move closer without moving. This is just like an unending bug fest. But that's okay. We can imagine it just moved a little bit and then... Um, so what happened to the SPG? It was destroyed by friendly action. Excellent. Let's take care of the truck. And uh, I believe with the truck, will HE fire do anything? I don't think it will. I think you still have to use AP. Reload from the ready rack. And... Button up. Might as well. Yeah, let's fire away. And I'm going to stay in direct fire because I'm hoping to hit with this and then get an AP round off too. Eight or less. Good. Loaded with AP. This is one that counts. Missed, of course. And the truck was hauled down and didn't even, wasn't even, didn't even get a chance to be hit. Or harmed, rather, by the HE round. Destroyed. Very nice. I didn't do much, but my friendly forces did a lot, and sometimes that's all you need. Two victory points. Let's check this town. Medium resistance. I'm feeling lucky. I'm probably not lucky, but I'm feeling lucky. Uh, s still have five hours and 15 minutes left in the day. Artillery successful. Battle encounter. All right. Truck. Light weapons. Light weapons. Easy peasy. Destroyed. Destroyed. Destroyed! That's how you do it. Enemy gets the first attack. Nobody there. Uh, nobody left. So, yeah, I'll just stick around. No, of course there's no target. Yeah, there's nobody left or remaining. Yeah. Everybody was taken out. That's good artillery. Light resistance. Uh, view the tank. Don't need to ch change anything. Enter the exit area. 45 minutes because there's no road. No resistance. Very nice. And 20 VP for capturing this area because it is an exit area. So that was a nice little coup. Now, because I have four hours and 15 minutes left, it's only 3.45 in the afternoon. Um, it generates a new map for me. So this is me going above and beyond what was expected of me 
in terms of capturing areas and just continuing on and pushing forward um, in the last uh, fading hours of daylight. So let's see how far I can get without dying. Light resistance, move in. Medium resistance, artillery, successful. Battle encounter. AT gun, PSW, SPW, and a truck. That's doable. Smoke, smoke, destroyed. I would have preferred the AT, the AT gun to be destroyed, but uh, that's the way it works. Now. AT gun moves further away, and uh, reinforcements, so another scout car. Again, whether this is a scout car or a Hanomag, not as important as taking out this AT gun. So, AT gun is hidden. Um, what do I do now? I guess I'll try to take out this guy because he's in short range. Ah, he's unknown. I didn't even spot him. Well, that's a problem. So I've got hidden and unspotted units. There's nothing I can attack in this turn. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is direct movement. Reverse to hull down because it's always good to be hull down. And it's usually good to have more distance between you and the enemy. And... That is good. You can put him in on none. Um, yep. Yeah. Moves further away. That takes him off the board. Destroyed. Destroyed. I am lucky. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. All right. Hour 45 remaining. Let's keep pushing forward. Let's make Patton proud. Truck. AT gun. And that's it. Truck moves closer. That's what it's supposed to do. Friendly tank to no effect. Okay. Small arms fire, no effect. Try to spot the AT gun. Yes, pack 40. Uh, it's a little more scary. Um, has be quite be uh, quite nice. It's not as 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 like as deathly scary as an 88, but a 75 is still some pretty serious firepower. Um, it's in the open, but remember it's an emplaced gun, so any to kill or to hit is still going to get a plus two. I am going to shoot at it. That's not a bad idea. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do, all right, here's my idea. Throw a smoke grenade. Gunner is not going to do anything at the moment. Gunner is going to change, uh, sorry, the loader is going to change the gun load. Um, Driver is going to stop. What this is going to do is it's going to give me a turn to change to um, HE, which is the only thing that's effective on AT guns. And it'll drop down some smoke. And the next turn, that smoke will still be there, and then I can start lobbing over shells um, to try to build up the uh, to try to build up the target. Actually, this might even be a, be a better thing to do. Just have the loader load, fire the main gun, and just reload HE from general. I waste an AP shell, which can't do anything, but I'm already building up the um, acquired target. Yeah. That's a good idea, Greg. I'm, I'm glad I thought of that. Okay. Um, is everybody ready? Yes. Let's do... I have to, I have to use direct fire because I'm firing AP. I guess that's the downside. So yeah, direct fire. Hit not possible on this target um, because of the range, um, because of the cover, the uh, combination between this, mostly because of the range. Um, I can't get a hit. I mean, I, I would need a less than, less than a two, basically, is the problem. So, oh, that's the problem. Because the hit's not possible, I can't even build up. Oh, all right. I, what I thought was a great idea turned out to be a horrible idea. So now I'm just sitting here. At least I got my smoke grenade, if nothing else. Friendly lead tank, no effect. Hopefully the smoke gr grenade helped. Artillery fire, no effect on my tank. So, so far my commander's been quite lucky that has, he hasn't gotten um, collateral damage from having an open hatch. Well, that's a bit of a problem. At least I've got acquired target one, so maybe now it's possible. Um, yeah, let's give it a shot. Fireman gun. Oh, still not possible because now I've got this smoke down here. Well, I'm doing really badly. If I get taken out by this anti-tank gun. Oh, and, and I tossed off another smoke grenade. All right, that's okay. It worked out for the best. I lost a VP, um, but my friendly forces came came to my aid, even though I obviously, even though I programmed this game, I obviously had no idea what I was doing. So we've got an hour left in the day. Um, ready rack is full. Open up the hatches. Let's check adjacent area. Brings us down to 45 minutes. Move in, bring us down to half an hour. 
no resistance. We've got 30 minutes left, um, which basically isn't enough time to do anything. We can check for resistance. We can try to move. Battle encounter is triggered. Okay, so the day will end after this battle is finished, basically, because um, I don't have any daylight left. Um, hopefully it'll end. That's what it's supposed to do anyway. Ooh, Edgar. So my loader suffered a near miss, but is unharmed. So he had the potential of being injured, but luckily the roll was not bad enough for him to be injured. 88 at close range. Oh, that's wonderful. Stationary in the woods. Well, let's see what happens. I've still got AP loaded, of course. Rotate and fire gun. Pass ammo. I don't know. Should I use the MGs on this guy? He's in the woods. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. And then reload HE for next turn. Oh man, 88s are scary, especially on the side, especially at close range, because if he fires at me, I mean, I don't, I don't stand a chance. All right, brave commander, you're going to throw another smoke grenade. Let's rotate and fire the coax, change the gun load to HE. Um, what's this guy over here? A truck. Let's, let's pivot the whole tank. Because you get, I think you get the same um, modifier whether you're pivoting or moving the, um, or or rotating the turret. So, all right, this is what's going to happen. Yes, everybody's doing something, and hopefully we'll all live. And you guys need to button up. Commander's going to throw a smoke grenade, which will happen after all of this other stuff to hopefully give me a little bit of protection. At least it's a plus one. Um, Gunner's going to fire coax. Uh, assistant driver is going to pass ammo because the, the, the bow MG isn't very effective. Driver is going to pivot the tank and loader is going to change, change the gun load to HE. HE, which I just said. Pivot the tank. Done. Now we're firing machine gun. Ah, oh, see this is how bad I am at this game. I didn't even look. I had hull down, which is a really nice protection. Because I pivoted, I lost it. Oh well, just got to keep going. All right, target for MG attack is the gun. Less than three. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Critical hit. I needed a three. I got a two. 88 is gone. Nicely done. Very nicely done. MG attack is over. The truck moves further away. It was destroyed. What a glorious end to the day. Uh, four extra v uh, victory points. The sun is set. 87 victory points for the day but more importantly than the victory points is the fact that i survived and it didn't crash which is always a good sign um well it's not supposed to display that twice but that's okay it's just reminding us and now oh no worse than a crash now i'm stuck in an infinite loop no i'm okay okay all right so i'll work on that i'll work on the uh the day and displays which are showing up about twice as many as they ought to um, but that's okay. So I feel pretty good about that um, day of combat, as you might be able to tell. So thanks again for listening. Um, I've obviously uncovered a couple more bugs that I'll try to work on. My aim is to release um, Alpha 5 uh, by Friday evening, um, GMT, and um, hopefully I'll get it out there and get some more people to play and enjoy it. And uh, as always, you can go on to Temple of the Roguelike forums, uh, send me a post a bug report suggestion and I'd be very uh, happy and uh, and willing to to read them. So thanks again for watching.